V-E-191 is the number to call us up in the Trojan Studios. I am your host of Love Line, Michael Catherwood. And uh, speaking of me, my father, the man who gave me life, the man who put sperm in an egg that birthed me, he is also the inventor of a game we like to play here on Love Line called Stinky Pinky. And uh, it was many moons ago when my dad was proudly serving in the United States Air Force. He was a high-ranking uh, member of military intelligence, and he was working at the Pentagon at the time. And they needed a lot of time. They needed a lot of things to, like, pass the time when they'd just be monitoring radars and stuff and doing a lot of boring stuff on crude computer equipment back in the uh, late, late 60s, early 70s. And... Yeah, pretty much, man. And that's how Stinky Keep Pinky came about. And then uh, I, I started playing it kind of accidentally on this show, and it seems like you, the listeners, really loved it. And we've been playing it now for about six months, and it seems to be going fine. My dear old dad, he pulled me aside uh, just uh, last night, and he said, hold on a second. Now, it's fine. Play Stinky Pinky. Enjoy it. It's yours to, 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 to do. But it, I feel like as a creator, I should let you know, uh, you're doing it wrong. There's some problems with how you guys play the game. Now we have my father in his first radio appearance on the phone. So let's bring up my dad. What line is he on here? There it is. He's on the Eric Erica line. Hello, Dad. Hello, Mike. How are you? I'm doing fine. Now, uh, you are a far more successful man than I ever will be, and you're, like, smarter and better than I. But do you get nervous for being from being on the radio? Of course. Okay, because, like, that's so weird. That like you, I I see you because you're my dad. You're like I see you as you know superior to me in many ways. But the one thing, like I kind of have an advantage on over advantage over you, we're engaging in right now. That's right. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Now, uh, okay. I kind of gave the little breakdown of of Stinky Pinky. Am I am I correct in that? Is is that how the game came about? Like at the Pentagon? Well, pretty much. Yeah. We we were a group of uh, of officers from. Uh, Army, Navy, Air Force, and our job was to maintain uh, the highly secret computers that kept track of orders of battle and uh, image reconnaissance, targeting information during the Vietnam War. And in those days, uh, computers weren't as reliable as they are now, so we spent many long hours sitting in a windowless, uh, highly secure computer room just sort of monitoring things and watching things and hoping they didn't uh, they didn't break down and uh, it was a group of us that sort of uh, invented this thing together playing different games and we we came up with uh, stinky pinky as a game to play to pass the time uh, in the long hours so sometimes the wee hours of the morning and uh, uh, it just uh, uh, expanded and uh, you know I used to play it with you when you were a young kid that is uh, true Improve your vocabulary. That is how I I came to know the game. It was that was our road trip game. You know when we'd be in the car, and uh, and and you 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 enjoy the fact that I brought it to Love Line and that people across the country and across Canada and stuff can now play Stinky Pinky. But you took some, you you took offense a little bit to how we've kind of bastardized the game. Am I right? Well, yeah, a little bit. The, the well, the original part of the original rules of the game were just like you described on the air. The, the both words had to rhyme. They had to have. Uh, actually the same number of syllables and had to rhyme and uh the, the third thing was they sort of they sort of had to be related to each other they just couldn't be two random unconnected words that happened to to rhyme right. so, so pinky, when you... pinky's the perfect example people have smelly fingers we won't go into details about that but uh yeah. <laughs> that was the thing that i was mentioning to you that Sometimes some of these things are kind of far out. But so yeah, you can't just describe. You can't just like isolate the, the two words. Can't be totally unrelated and 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 have nothing to do well, with each that, other. That was certainly our rules. And I every now and then when I listen, I hear something. I go, ah, that's not a good one because it were. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so uh, essentially what you're saying is that not only do the, the the words have to rhyme, but there has to be some relation to it. Like you said, a smelly those, finger. Those and, were our rules. Okay. However. You know, the game evolves. I, I enjoy listening to it. And they come up with some, believe me, your, your listeners come up with some great ones. I love it. Nice. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for setting the record straight. Now, you threw a party for my brother-in-law, 
yep. uh, tonight at, at the home, and uh, it was a big fiesta, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, everybody was having a good time. It, do you think that because, you know, mom may have knocked some back, you're going to get lucky? <laughs> we'll leave that between us. Are you going right to re- you gonna wreck mom right after this phone call? Right now I'm sitting listening to you smoking a nice cigar. All right. Well, enjoy yourself. You've earned it for many years of hard work. Sit back, relax, and uh, smoke cigars and, and enjoy yourself. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Dad. Bye. Love you. There you go. Mike. Yes. I heard you in here talking to him off air, and the one thing you promised you weren't going to do was talk about his wiener because he didn't want to go on. I was talking about my mother's vagina. Yeah, yeah but his, his his wiener was definitely involved. Uh, let's call my dad back and ask if he gets anal. Let's not do that. Why? I was going to go on and ask what the hell is wrong with you. What do you mean? Was, is it his fault that you are the way you are? No. In fact, it's it, it's in spite of. My dad's like super. Like, you heard him. I mean, during the Vietnam War, my dad was one of the more uh, responsible and more. Uh, he, he had more responsibility than a lot of other people in the entire United States military. He was a very high-ranking military official uh, with 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 some of the highest military clearance during the Vietnam War, living in Washington, D.C., working at the Pentagon. And uh, he, go- he has gone on to have a, a immensely successful career uh, with a big, huge, multi-purpose business firm. And now he's retired, and he's a straight and narrow he's kind of super smart guy. He's smoking cigars by himself, yeah. enjoying you know, as, as he deserves to. And his jackass son is talking about him banging his mom on yeah. radio. Yeah, no, we, I mean, I, I, it is, if you met my parents, you would wonder how I ended up this way. But, you know, look, aren't you glad I did? <laughs> Oh, my God. That was the cheesiest thing you've ever done with a smile. Take a call. <laughs> 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Thank you, Dad, for setting the record straight and coming on the air. I know you you don't like that kind of stuff, so I love you. Thank you. Uh, 1-800-LOVE-191 is the number. Uh, Drew's going to be jealous. He wasn't here. Uh, Drew, Drew likes my dad, so Drew is going to be jealous.